So I've always been interested in my gaming. I wasn't particularly into my Segas or Nintendos, which I know means that by many people's standards, I can't really call myself a gamer. But I was, and I just really liked my PlayStation and my Game Boys. The PlayStation 1 has a particular place in my childhood memory. Like many my age, it's not only the consoles which we've seen change over the course of our relationship with gaming, which of course they have, as graphics and map sizes, amongst other things, offer impressive and vast gameplay experiences. But we've also seen immense changes to the TVs that we play on. And as I said at the beginning of this video, as I was sat playing The Last of Us 2 on my 50 inch 4K TV, I found myself trying to remember what games actually looked like in the 90s, which is when I really started to play games most evenings on my TV at home. I remember begging my parents for a good TV, and after browsing the Argos catalogue in and around 1998, I actually became obsessed with using my Sony PlayStation on a Sony screen. But not any old Sony. I had my heart set on a flat screen Sony Trinitron which at the time just sounded like the coolest name in the world. So the other night I picked up my phone and started shopping around for a Sony Trinitron so I could plug in my old Sony PlayStation and see if it lived up to my expectations and my memories. As the purchase of Facebook Marketplace, I had a few days to wait around until the seller was happy to deliver the TV to me. So I started researching Trinitron and I wanted to understand what made that brand so desirable 20 years ago and to so many people still today. So as part of this video, let's take a little look at the history of the brand Trinitron. Well, to the average consumer like me, or an eight year old me, it was the striking flat screen of the Trinitron TVs that was the major appeal, especially compared to traditional CRT TVs with bubble screens. A bit like this one. And I just thought these looked ultra modern and maybe even futuristic at the time. Little did I know that because Trinitron monitors are vertically flat, actually they have less image distortion and less glare than most other monitors. And actually, in my completely unprofessional opinion, the flat screen on the left actually makes it look larger than the bubble on the right. Perhaps some of the curvature of the screen loses some of the diagonal surface area. Behind the Trinitron screen, there are two thin, dark horizontal lines that span the width. These lines are actually small wires that support the aperture grille. And screens 15 inches and below, like the one in front of us today, have one wire located about two thirds of the way down the screen while monitors that were greater than 15 inches had two wires. And actually these wires were far less apparent or even completely obscured. I think like on the one that we've got today on most standard definition sets due to the wider scan lines to match the lower resolution of the video that was being displayed. Now it might not seem like a big deal, but actually that aperture grill that's behind the screen in front of us supported one of the big differences between a Trinitron TV and most other CRT TVs on the market. Trinitron used an aperture grille instead of a shadow mask to create the colour image on the screen. A shadow mask, like the one used on the Toshiba on the right hand side here, is a perforated metal screen that's situated directly behind the phosphor screen in certain types of colour TVs. It had a pattern of precisely located holes through which the electron beams behind them could shine. The electron beams came from three electron emitters, commonly referred to as guns, and they were usually arranged in a triangle. These pointed at the barrier called the shadow mask. They struck the dots and created the image. Sony, however, liked a different approach and they used an approach from GE which was to have the electron emitters in a linear system instead of a triangular formation because that made it easy to converge the three beams. But Sony also liked the idea of just having the one gun because that was, well, 
less expensive than having three. So we've talked about how the two different screens had either an aperture grille or a shadow mask. One of the big differences between the two was that during the display of bright images, a shadow mask technology warms and then expands outward in all directions. That would sometimes be called blooming. Aperture grills, well, don't. They just don't exhibit this behavior. When the wires heat up, they expand vertically. And because there are no defined holes in an aperture grill, this expansion doesn't affect the image and the wires do not move horizontally. So for this reason, Trinitron systems are generally easier to focus than shadow masks and generally had a sharper image. And this was a major selling point. Again, little did I know that when I was a child looking through the Argos catalogues. But Sony had exclusive bragging rights over this technology until 1996. The company's patent rights, however, did expire and competitors began incorporating the technology into their own designs. And of course, as we discussed at the start of this video with me on my TV nowadays, CRTs became also almost extinct as we all threw out our old units and replaced them with shiny new LCD flat screen displays. Luckily for us retro fans, some people kept hold of theirs, giving us the opportunity to fire up an old console for hours of nostalgic fun. Thanks for checking out the video today. I hope you've learned something about Sony Trinitrons that perhaps you didn't know before watching this video. If you've actually got more information and you'd like to share it with us and the retro community, drop us a comment in the comment section below. We're always learning here on the channel and we'd love to learn some new information that you've got about Sony TVs. Remember to subscribe to the channel. We upload new content every Friday. And if you weren't already, I hope you are now. Feeling retro.